Hey friends, Mario Cavallo here. You know, for 2020, there's only two very, very important themes that I've decided to bring to video. They've been on my mind for a long time, and this is one of them. To tell you a story, what I'd like you to do, simply follow along. That's all we're going to do here for a few minutes. Okay, and it's a business story. And let's see what kind of conclusions we can come to naturally. Without politics, without government, without left, without right, without any of that crap. Just real life, real world. What should be happening as opposed to what is happening. That's all. Let's make our judgments. And pass it along. Talk to people about it. Have a narrative. Have a conversation. That's all. Here's what it is. Hashtag the real problem. Remember that. Hashtag the real problem. People talk about society having all kinds of issues and all kinds of ills. But in the end, what do our issues and our problems most often go back to at the most fundamental root? Maybe. All right. So... With that idea in mind, here's our story. Simple story. It's just a nice, happy story. It's me, I got an idea. And uh, I got my buddy, George. My buddy, George, he's from Australia. And, uh, well, our circumstances don't really matter, but we're just, you know, we're entrepreneurs. We're people with circumstances. And we, we happen to be a couple of guys, in our case, for example, that live in China. We're expats. I'm from America. He's from Australia. And we, we live in here in China for for uh, 15, 20 years, and we come up with a business idea. Now, we could be anybody. We could be any. We could be a couple of entrep entrepreneurs in America. We could be a couple of entrepreneurs in Canada or South America or, or, or Italy. It really doesn't matter. We're, we're in a pretty open, uh, you know, capitalistic society where if we want to come up with a business idea and, and register a new business and go for it and invest our money and, and, and to try to make our vision come true, yeah, okay, great, we can do that. Okay, you can do that here in China, by the way. Um, you can do that in America. You can do that pretty much anywhere. Make money, make a profit, have employees, all that happy stuff, right? Just normal business. We gotta come up with a great idea. Wow, it's just this this hybrid widget combination of technology and online social this and that and redistribution of goods and information. And I mean, wow, it's just, it's like internet 5.0 combined with AI 5.0 and tech 5.0 and, and uh, the latest and greatest in uh, hyper genetics of uh, genetically modifying food and combined with uh, the education industry and, and, and a revolution in healthcare. I mean, this is a really great idea. Whatever the hell the idea is, it doesn't matter. We came up with an enormously great idea. We put up $100,000 of our own money to start it up and invest in it. Hey, we're the owners. It's our money. We're the ones who should, you know, benefit from that. And if we can become successful, because we're the ones who took the risk, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, hey, sorry, let me say, let me continue that idea for a moment. In society, we are where we are. All the amazing things that we see all around us, all the great things have happened due to men, due to entrepreneurs who had visions, had money, took their time, took their energy, and took the risks, and many times lost their fortunes along the way too. So hey, that's how societies are built. Built. Not devastated. Built. Right? Right. That's another clue. Okay. So we start up the business and, you know, we're the owners and we make our lovely little bu typical business plan, right? A business plan is a business that has after expenses, you know, operating expenses and rent. I mean, standard balance sheet, standard P&L uh, by your accountant. At the end of the day, if you have a net 20% or 15% gross profit and then net 10% uh, to 15% profit and cash flow, you have a successful business like a restaurant or any other kind of retail business even a corporate kind of services business, whatever it might be. Tip this again, we're just following standard accounting here, right? Hmm. So, uh, my buddy George and I, we give each other $3,000 a month in salary. 
we're the owners after all, and uh, we hire 50 employees to help us get the business off the ground, and we are paying them $1,800 a month. That's, you know, that's what we got to do, right? We start off the business, and at the end of the first year, the business is very, very successful. It's doing pretty well. All right, great. Thanks a lot. You know, so we give the employees a couple hundred dollar Christmas bonus and business has gone really, really well. And we continue into the second year at the end of the second year. Really, really well. We give each other raises to 5,000. We give the employees the same 1,800. Fine. No big deal. Third year, fourth year, fifth year passes. By the time the fifth year passes, we're now paying the employees $2,200 a month. We now have 150 employees instead of 50. And we're paying ourselves $10,000 a month. And that's when you think you're rich. I mean, honestly, if you spent your life making two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 a month and you're suddenly making $10,000 a month, you're feeling pretty rich and you got a couple of companies. We've got a couple of company cars too on lease. So the company's paying for those too. And the offices are really, really nice. Okay, fine. Five years later, we're ultra wealthy. We're really rich. We make 50,000 US dollars a month each. That's our compensation. We're thinking about how to maybe take a shell company and do a reverse M&A merger thingamajiggy so we can get richer. And we're making 50,000 a month. We're driving Mercedes. Our employees are now making $2,200 a month. Of course, except for the like 10 who are becoming like senior level people, we're paying them fifty, dollars $100,000 a year, 10000 a month, like we used to make. But we're making 50000 a month. Good. Okay. Let's fast forward a few more years. Okay. Companies becoming huge nationwide. We now have 2000 employees. Okay. Now keep in mind, we're fast forwarding five years, which means for the past five years, we were making $50,000 a month. And for the five years before that, we were making $10,000 a month. We're doing good, except now the business is enormous. We've got 5,000 employees. For whatever reason, they're still only at $2,200 a month. Mm. And we are now millionaires. Millionaires. I'm worth $5 million. And George is worth $5 million US. We're set for life. That's how we feel. We can't believe it's a dream come true. We're worth five million US dollars each. And two years later, miracles happen and we're worth fifty million dollars each. Fifty million. I want you to imagine how it feels what I'm saying to you. Because I looked at George the other day and I said to George, ten years ago we were both making ten thousand dollars a month and we thought, holy guacamole. We're rich. We are really doing well. And now here we are. And between the two of us, we're worth $100 million. And your annual salary is $1.5 million. And my annual salary is $1.5 million. And we have these five-star offices. And you bought your son a Mercedes. And I bought my son a Bentley. My wife, your wife. Life is beautiful. The kids can afford to go anywhere they want in the world to go to college. It's an amazing, amazing, wonderful story. We're still only paying our employees $2,200 a month. What the hell is that? I mean, they can barely pay their bills. The company, those people are the reason that we exist. We couldn't have shared more with them. So the whole company flourishes. The whole society flourishes. The fuck I got to be doing while I'm worth $50 million? What am I going to do with $50 million? To me, being a middle-class guy like I came from, I don't know how to spend that kind of money. Okay? So what happens now, two, three, four, five more years later, when George and I look at each other and we're in astonishment because we're not worth $50 million. 
You ready for this? We're worth five hundred million dollars. And we have 15, 20, 30, 40 million dollars cash in the bank. Now, this is 20 years has passed. Our employees are still only making $2,200 a month. Okay? The cost for our employees to go to the doctor has quadrupled, even with insurance. We're paying $800 a month for our employees' monthly health insurance when it used to be only $300. Their rent is double what it used to be, which is true. They can't even afford to buy a house. They can't afford, barely. Both of them have to work, the mother and the father, assuming it's not a single family home. They can't even pay their fucking bills. But me, I'm worth a half a million dollars. Just me as an individual person. It never occurred to me to stop along the way and say, hey, wait a minute, this is crazy. Instead of me being worth a half a million, half a million dollars, sorry, Sorry, I got to correct myself here. Instead of being worth a half a billion dollars, I'm now worth 500 million. Man, I was freaking out when I was worth 50 million. And now I'm worth 500 million? Oh, for God's sake, I pick up the phone, I call my accountant, and I say, hey, man, divest 100 million of my money. It's like more money I know what to do with. Divest my 100, 100 million of my 500 million. Sell it away and give it to all my employees, for God's sake. Let me raise up the society. Everybody's struggling. They can barely pay their bills. I can see what's happening out there in the world. And I'll still be worth 400 million. But that's 200 million. And I'll still be worth 300 million. And you're all saying to yourselves, yeah, that would be like morally and ethically correct. Should the government tell you you have to do that? No. So this has nothing to do with government. I'm not telling you you should give my half a million half of my half a billion to the government to let them distribute it, they'll mishandle it. I don't want to give the money to the government through higher, higher, higher taxation. I just want me and George to realize we could be a really nice guys and make the world a much better, nice place. The hell do I have to be worth a half a billion dollars for? How about I'm just worth a couple hundred million? I couldn't fathom how rich I was. When I was worth 50 million and still paying my employees 2200. So I call up my accountant and I say, somehow, slowly over the next year, I want to get divested out of this 300 million and I want to, I should have shared it with all those employees in the first place. So the whole society is enjoying themselves more and the kids can have a better education. The people can live more comfortably with less stress, with less problems. That's all I want to accomplish. Let the whole society benefit. And this was what was happening with the middle class dream in America that started post-World War II until the current crop of billionaires and Wall Street oligarchs and government oligarchs and the Fed and the bankers and everybody decided, no, we're going to put a stop to all that. Let's destroy the middle class and make ourselves filthy rich instead. And that's what they did starting around 2000, okay, and... I forget the name of the act that they repealed away. Clinton repealed it away. Damn, I can't remember. And uh, Hawley, Grassley, something. Damn, I can't remember. And that allowed the banks 
to start being investment banks on Wall Street, Goldman Sachs. And a few years later, of course, we had the financial crisis that melted the world, melted the world's economy. All the guys like me, all the work that I had on the books for 2007, eight was gone, gone, okay? And that happened to millions and millions and millions of regular people. And how did the government respond? Obama took the bankers into his room and said, everybody wants you guys hanging from the noose because you should be. You almost blew up the world's financial system. And the only way we let it be bailed out is we gave you billionaires more billions. And now we take money, the Fed, and we put the billions at the window at zero interest and give it to the billionaires. But all the poor people didn't get anything. In fact, you know what they did? All those houses that got foreclosed on, they took the houses. This is what Obama did. Okay? It happened to be his presidency. Okay? And that's how they reacted. They took care of the billionaires. But they didn't even bail out all the people who got foreclosed on. But they bailed out the billionaires. Let's keep going. Because that's not even to where we are today in 2019, is it? Have you stopped thinking yet about how outrageous and how morally and ethically unreasonable what I'm saying is about me and George? Morally and ethically, I'm allowed to be a selfish fuck. And I am. I'm worth a half a million, a half a billion dollars, and I'm still only paying my employees twenty two hundred. That's the capitalistic world. I'm allowed to be a selfish fuck if I want to be. So we can't legislate morality. And I'm, again, I'm not saying I want to legislate morality, okay? So, again, we continue the story. We don't talk about a situation here where we are multi, multi, multi millionaires, where we're paying our regular employees who are still struggling and we're worth a half a billion dollars, an unfathomable amount of money. Folks, that's not where we're at. We're in the new world of ultra billionaires where George and I, we were, you know, Zuckerberg, Dorsey, Bezos. I could name many, many more multi, multi, multi billionaires, Gates, okay, who became multi, 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 multi billionaires. Now, I just want to talk about me and George. Me and George are now worth a half a billion each. And we did a, some kind of a thing on Wall Street, and then all of a sudden in the next five years, we became worth, I can't even fathom this, $15 billion each. But our employees are still only making $2,200 a month, and they can't pay the bills. How, in fact, the employees are making so little that they're actually having to apply for government subsidy to be able to pay the bills. So the government is subsidizing me and George so we can be worth $15 billion. Why would we be worth $15 billion? Why wouldn't we have gone to the board and our accounting team and said, hey, listen, man, <clears throat> from this point forward, we got to throttle back the proportionate percentage of the increase in my wealth and distribute that to my employees as my company continues growing. That's a very nice and reasonable thing to do. Great for business, great for society, great for company culture, great for the families, great for future educational leaders, people not struggling. So, you know, listen, Mary, Mary's the head of my accounting department. I say, Mary, look, I'm worth a half a billion dollars now. Over the next five years, this is what I should have done, but I didn't do it. I th it looks like I'm going to become worth like 15 billion. I don't want to become worth 15 billion. I mean, crazy as it sounds, I'll allow myself to peak at like 5 billion, but do that in a way that as that money grows, take, take, take out the majority portion of that and put it into the compensation of the employees. So that by the end of the five years, instead of me being worth from a half a billion to 15 billion, I've gone from a half a billion to 5 billion. And as all those shares gave up in value, went up in value, they got transferred, assigned, put in pensions, signed to the people, 
assigned to the people. So 10 billion of the 15 billion of wealth increase that would have been mine, I made sure that 10 of the 15 billion got distributed out to my people who helped me get rich. I apologize for the last three, four minutes. I was looking here, not here. How about some foresight? Do you know there are business owners who have done that? You do know that, don't you? There are people who are billionaires who gave all their money back or a vast majority of it because they recognized that there was they, they, could, they couldn't do anything with it. I was just watching a video the other day with Denzel Washington, very nice guy. And he said, he said, I'm worried. He says, I made hundreds of millions of dollars. He says, I'm going to die soon. I'm going to take it with me. What am I going to do with all that money? It's the truth. Meanwhile, society all around you is suffering big time. And your company is still paying them the same wages. That's so fucked. You're an asshole. That's my end conclusion. You're kind of a dickhead. How can I conclude otherwise? Somehow, I'm supposed to be a guy where, you know, you are admiring me and George. You're putting me, you're revering me. You're putting me on the cover of Time Magazine. You're not talking about the fact that I'm still paying these guys. Okay? Now, guys come along like Bernie Sanders and try to point out how guys like Jeff Bezos are fucking the world. Because they are. But the rest of the world is somehow admiring this guy. And I'm using Bezos as an example. Now, <clears throat> I have not even touched the tip of the iceberg of how unreasonable it is to allow an individual person to become worth billions. While that same person is responsible and could easily decide to not let themselves become worth billions, but to only become worth a billion. Gee, it ain't quite enough, is it? Can you understand and hear the sarcasm in my voice? It's fucking crazy to be worth a hundred billion, a hundred million. It's even more freaking crazy to be worth five hundred million. Because if it's a hundred million and it's already crazy, five hundred million is so crazy you can't even fathom it. So what the hell is Jeff Bezos doing being worth a hundred billion? What what is that? What has he been waiting for? To what, how can the guy get up in the morning? Put on his socks and go pee without and looking in the mirror without saying, this is fucked. This is fucked up. I'm an individual person. I can't be worth this much money. And I'm seeing stories in the newspaper about my own employees, my people who are in the, working in the warehouses, busting their asses. They can barely get their bills paid. How, how, I can't understand this. Again, I'm not calling for government taxes. That's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to be alive and awake as a human being. It's not even meant to be liberal or leftist or progressive or anything. It's just meant to be common sense. I'm thinking about me and George, my business partner. We're billionaires. And we're still paying our people that little bit of fucking money. And the society, I can see what's happening in the society. It's miserable. In case you don't know it, homelessness is skyrocketing. Suicides skyrocketing. Do you know this? I mean, there's very, very bad things happening, all of which wouldn't have been happening had we just maintained better pay levels for a lot of these people instead of letting them fall away. They fell off the cliff. A lot of these people fell off the cliff. Because of the way that we are operating the capitalist system, we're letting people like me and George become worth billions. And we're jacking up the prices of health care. We're doing vertical market. It's all legal. It's horrifying, isn't it? It's all legal but unethical. We, we use vertical markets like health care, pharma. Now they did it with college tuition. They started with subprime mortgages and real estate. We're vertically creating hyperinflation. So there's not a hyperinflation in the whole currency like, the, like happened in Argentina and Zimbabwe and, and I think now Chile as well. You see what they did? The Wall, Street, the Wall Street pricks are so clever, they learn that they can just create individual bubbles. Read the stories on this by Matt Taby, the amazing, excellent Rolling Stone writer. This is what Goldman Sachs did. They find a vertical asset market and drive the bubble, the famous Dutch tulip bubble. And they make themselves billions in the process and fuck the society along the way. This is the reality. Okay? It ain't right. It needs to stop. And this is the real problem. Now, 
I'm going to cover up one final point. How much did this matter? And this is going to be three minutes and I'm done. How much did this matter 10,000 years ago and 1,000 years ago? And nine, uh, 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 just 100 years ago. It mattered to half a billion people on planet Earth. That was the world's population. By the time the end of the 20th century came, 19, uh, 1899, 1900, the world's entire population was still only a billion. Now, through a combination, so, so when things went bad, it only, it, it only affected a billion people. But now when things go bad, now when you have refugees because there's no money, because governments are so corrupt, because billionaires have become billionaires. I mean, you got a billionaire making worth a billion. And now he's worth 10 billion. But he's not even thinking about it. But the society, we now have 7 billion. A combination of technology, industrial, in the industrial revolution, we move to uh, technology, medical improvement. Uh, medical is primarily the reason. Okay, the average lifespan was 47 because a lot of people died young because there was no medicine, but now there's medicine. The population, for a number of all of these combined reasons, please read it yourself. Um, oh, there's a great book about that stuff, Germs, Guns, and Steel or something like that by a guy named Jared something or other. Uh, we now have, because of all of these factors that came together in this last hundred years, seven billion people on the planet. So... Getting fucked by the billionaires is of much higher consequence. If you're a billionaire and you become worth two billion from a billion, doesn't that sound like ridiculous? What'd you do with the billion? You just kept it for yourself. And then what about Bezos? A hundred billion. What? A billion is already crazy. So two that makes two billion double crazy. So that makes 100 billion unfathomably, unconscionably, indescribably impossible to imagine. That's how much 100 billion dollars is. Now, go to the internet and Google it. There's a few websites. How much the billionaires are donating. Thank you, Bill Gates. Thank you, Warren Buffett. And thank you, many of the billionaires who already are waking up. Oh, Abigail Disney. Thank you. Because she, she's she been trying to tout this problem. We can't be billionaires while we the, our employees can't pay their bills. She, the, the poor woman, the, the woman's worth like 300. In her case, she's not a billionaire, but she's like multimillionaire. And uh, she, she went to her own Disneyland, right? She's a Disneyland heiress. And she's like, my people, my employees, they can't even pay their bills. <laughs> Everybody's fucked. Everybody's life is fucked. Well, and I'm worth billion, millions on these people's backs. It's disgusting, isn't it? It's disgusting and it needs to come to a stop. Hashtag the real problem. It's the real problem. So, folks, I'm going to end it right there. This is a video that I needed to make and you get the point. I'm going to say it in the end one more time. Hashtag the real problem. I'm not going to say a word about it politically. I'm not going to go there. Because I, I hate that the political system has become corrupt as well. And a lot of these people become worth multi, 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 multi millionaires, if not billionaires, be, as part of the corruption of the political system. So I'm not going to say, yeah, I love Bernie Sanders or anything like that. Forget all that. Pick your winners in the world of politics. That whole thing is such a corrupt mess anyway. The real message is the story of Mario and my partner, George. When I was worth a half a billion and I called up my accountant, Mary, and I said, Mary, this, this is, this, this can't continue. 
I got my employees, a lot of them, they can't even barely pay their bills. And I'm about to become worth from a half a billion. My, my worth is going to go up to a billion and then five billion and then 15 billion. That's what's going to happen. If that happens, Mary, divest two thirds of it out to them and let the rest of it continue to grow to me. So instead of me becoming worth 15 billion, I'll only become in total worth 5 billion and the rest of it will have gotten distributed away to all my employees equally. Figure that out with the board and wow, my whole company would be such a fantastic, admirable business model and I'll still be worth 5 billion. Wow. You see how absurd it all is? So that's how far out of control the situation is. Go to the website to see that the billionaires are donating their money. They're starting to realize and they're divesting many of their billions. But it's not enough. Because if you're worth 30 or 40 billion and you start divesting and then you're still only worth five, six, seven, eight billion but the world is still suffering, it's not enough. Now, the objection is to say, well, who are you to tell me that I, what I'm supposed to do with my money? Hey, you know, fuck you on that note. Right? I don't want to have that conversation with you. I can't legislate morality. The government can't legislate morality. But I do know it's a waste of money in society and a ruin of society for me or anybody else to be worth like a billion dollars let alone five or 10 or 15 or 20 or 50 billion. And you have a moral sense of obligation to the whole society all around you to raise up the entire world. And you got to do that before you die because you're the billionaire and we're not. And that is hashtag the real problem. Thank you, everybody. Have a great 2020.